Welcome to this video on next generation intrusion detection. My name is Dar Delaney. Now for this video we're going to use one of our own products which is called LangGuardian and we're going to use network traffic as a data source. So what is Network LangGuardian? Well it's a software product that you can use to find security issues and network misuse. It's a Snort IDS but it also has traffic analysis built in. Now because it has both the IDS and traffic analysis built in, you can drill down to things like granular, granular information like usernames, file names, web domains, You're easy to read information. You can get alerts, so you can get an email alert, you can send alerts to your SIM system for example, so they're, they're customizable, they're very flexible. And as I mentioned, you get visibility visibility from a span or a mirror port. You don't need to install agents, client software. So it's a very easy way to find out what is happening on a network. And you can deploy, download and deploy in standard hardware, um, or you can put it on a virtual uh, hypervisor, for example, VMware or Hyper-V. So you can test this out yourself. You don't need to worry about getting an appliance here. It's software you can try out yourself. So let's take a look at Network LangGuardian in, app, in, in action. So I'm now logged on to my LangGuardian. And let's me take a look at some of the security issues that have been detected on this network. So there's a couple of ways to look at the data. We'll come to alerts in a second, but if I want to interactively work with the data, and I can look at real-time data, or I could look at historical data, I might want to go back a week or so, I can use dashboards and reports. Now I've started my journey here on the network security dashboard. A few things of interest. Um, these are the top events that have been triggered on this network. So we have some net scanning. So something is scanning our network. Um, we got some BitTorrent. So we can do, we can investigate here. Let's take a look at the net scanning, for example. So there's 9,000 scans over the last hour. So to do the analysis, we simply drill down. So what do we find out? Well, there's a machine here, 10.1.1.100. It's making a lot of, looks like web connections over port 80 to lots of external, they're, they're external. We use TIN addressing, so these are all external. So IP address outside the network. So we might want to investigate this further and let's do that. So now we, we have an event here, which is a network scan and we need to do some forensics on it. So to do that, I gotta to go to search, go to network forensics. I have an IP address, so that's my starting point and press go. What I want to know is, we know it's making a lot of web connections. Is it doing something else on our network? Is it running some strange application? What's happening? Well, this is this uh, IP address. Um, this is activity associated with it. Um, from a traffic point of view, it's generating quite a bit. We're looking at an hour worth of activity here. Some HTTP, crypto traffic, some Oracle. Taking a look at the files they're accessing. Um, so we can actually see what files they're accessing on, on Windows file shares. It looks like patient records here, which in itself could be suspicious. Also some prop to last database. Let's scroll down further here. Um, actually on our own website. Now the interesting thing when it comes to drill downs, um, Actually, it comes to that what caught my eye here is some of the statements that the user's running. These are SQL um, statements. Again, this information is captured from network traffic. You don't need to install stuff on your SQL servers. And we can see the actual queries the user's running. So the select name, credit card numbers, doing some work here with credit card numbers as well on our SQL servers. It's all adding up to possibly some suspicious activity here. They're also downloading stuff by uh, using BitTorrent. Just open up that one there in a new tab. We'll do some investigating that in a second. Just want to show you here because our suspicions um, kind of heightened when we saw the HTTP traffic um, and what we can do is we actually could drill down on the HTTP traffic to find out more. So I'm just curious about this website here. So again I can click on the total and drill down. So we have the actual resource they're accessing here. So there actually looks like they're streaming Top Gear. Now that, we see a lot of connections that kind of all adds up now because the streaming stuff just generates a lot of um, connections um, over, over HTTP um, so as the user watches a video here, which looks to be a 
1024K high definition video. So that 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 accounts for that lot of web activity. Now it's network misuse. I'll probably need to um, check with the user and let's get that username. So we've got option here to view report username. So it's Dan Williams here, um, and actually another user associated with this as well, Robert Schmidt. So two users here associated with this on this machine. Um, that in this case they're streaming some. Um, video which is non-work related we can clearly see now what i also did there is i just got curious is that they're they're using BitTorrent. now they may say oh well, they're using it for legitimate reasons i may be able to tell them otherwise so i've just opened this here in a new tab and okay possibly it is so it's they're downloading um cr linux they're basically downloading an iso um using BitTorrent. so that's okay what i did there is i right click um I clicked on this link here, which opened up and this reveals what they're downloading. Anything else of interest in here? Some BitTorrent, some with scans we've looked at. The, they're streaming some stuff across the network. Um, so we're, we're getting a full picture of what this user is doing on the network. Let's go back to our security dashboard. Now there's a few important things we've just seen there. We have started with an event which could be triggered by a snort signature and then when we saw that there was a system associated with that we could then do full forensics on that IP address or username and see what else they're doing on the network. Now if you want to be alerted about certain things like for example BitTorrent here if I click on the event you could say okay we'll send an email and save that and basically what happens then is that it you could create a distribution list on LangGuardian. When that event is triggered, you're immediately notified. Now, I'm not shown in my list here, but it is available as well. You can also send that as an SNMP trap. So if you've got a SIM system, or we also support Syslog, um, if your SIM um, supports Syslog or SNMP traps, LangGuardian can be used as a data source so that it can inform your SIM or whatever event collector you're using of, a, of an issue on the network. Let's go back now to my security dashboard again and maybe take a look at a few more things. <clears throat> shows a graph here of the number of events triggered. I can click here and, and see what type of events were triggered at that point. Another interesting one I want to take a look at here is that there's a suspicious looking email, um, Bank of America security alert. Just looks a bit odd. What's going on here is there's an SMTP decoder in LangGuardian, which is extracting out certain metadata like email addresses, uh, subject lines. So it's not storing the full email, but it's pulling out certain information so that you can use for forensics. You got the source IP, these are clients on your network where these emails are coming from, time, from to, it's associated with Dan Williams and Helen Jones. You may want to check with those users, make sure they're not a victim of a phishing type attack. So it's just maybe a phone call or an email to those. If you just want to send them the email direct from here, I can go to more actions. Sorry, click on email, send it to whoever, Dan, or Williams, whatever their email is. Subject line, you know, please be aware of potential phishing attack. Put a message here, send. It'll actually send them this report uh, so they can see from themselves what you've uncovered on the network. There are a lot of other reports available. Um, let's go back here to dashboard that have a security or an intrusion detection type element to them. Um, an interesting one, I'm just going to go here to Internet Activity Dashboard. And if I look here at inbound connections, so you this may not think, well, is, is this intrusion? Well, absolutely. Something inbound coming into my network could be an intruder. So what can we find out? Well, we can see here that it's using TCP port 10022. Now that means nothing. I could check my firewall and see what rule that might be that's allowed port 10022. But I need more information here. I just want to understand it better. Now, what's coming up straight away here is the fact that somebody is coming inbound into our network using SSH. So they've found a way of tunneling into the network. And they've, over the last hour, there's nine megabytes data has been sent received. May see, not seem like a lot of data, but that still is a major security issue. This is the IP address. Um, well, I could drill down further and probably explain it better. So this is the external IP address. It's connecting to this device here. 
using 1022, we've already found out that this is an SSH tunnel, and we can see sent and received data, and more links allow us to drill down and see, you know, exact date and time. So I need to immediately review my inbound firewall rules to see, is this allowed? If not, I should definitely block port 1022 and stop any inbound connections on that. Finally, um, so far you've probably picked up the fact that we're not storing every single packet of data. So we're storing what we call metadata. So it's certain pieces of data from network packets, like a file name, like a IP address. And the reason for that is that it cuts down on the amount of data you need to store on disk. So that you can go back weeks on a, you know, on a 200 gigabytes disk, you can go back weeks and weeks and weeks. If you were storing all packets, you may only be able to go back a couple of minutes or hours. However, there are instances where we do store the packet. But when I say packet, the packet content. Let me give you an example. So I'm back on my network security dashboard. And I'm going to hit the arrow here to show me the full report because it's only showing top five. And let's pick something out here. So I'm just going to pick one of these events here. When I drill down on this, I can see source and destination. We've already covered this. But under more links, there's an option here to view packet data. And this is the actual full packet. So you've got the header, IP header, TCP header, and the actual raw data itself. Also shown is the signature here that was used um, to trigger this event. So something in this packet matched what this signature is looking for. So if an IDS event is triggered, the packet that triggered the event is stored so that when you're analyzing it or doing some forensics, you can see inside the packets and see what triggered the event. Just on that topic of um, signatures, the system updates itself automatically. Um, you don't need to worry about uploading signatures or writing rules. This all happens automatically. It downloads them, updates itself. But if you want to create your own IDS signatures, you can do that too. The system is very flexible. It allows you to write your own IDS signatures. So that's some of the basics of the network, Langardian, the IDS features. I mean, if you want to try this out, by all means, go to our website, download the trial, just take a look at the data that it provides. Um, it's fully featured for 30 days, includes the IDS, so you can try it out in your own network. So thanks very much for taking the time out to, to watch this video, and we hope to see you again on, a, on another one soon.